Meanwhile, Hollywood star Ben Stiller has met Ukraine's president in Kyiv, calling him his hero. The actor is an ambassador for the UN's refugee agency and described some of the destruction he saw in Ukraine as shocking. Well, Eurovision winners Kalash Orchestra from Ukraine will be performing at this year's Glastonbury Festival. <laughs> The band whose song Stefania earned them the title at the singing contest in Turin last month will be on stage on Friday. They join the likes of Billie Eilish, Kendrick Lamar and Sir Paul McCartney at Glastonbury. Well, let's get an update on the strikes. And the few trains that were running today have now stopped and all are at a standstill across the country on the biggest day of disruption in a generation. In London, it wasn't just the trains at a standstill, but the underground too. The Prime Minister has said the country must stay the course. Well, after millions had to make alternative plans today, the RMT and rail bosses say fresh talks will be held tomorrow to try and find a solution. Next tonight, a special frontline report from Ukraine on how its soldiers are coping with the grinding war of attrition. ITV News filmed in the Donbass region where Russia is intensifying its attacks. We saw the empty city of Lysyshans, which Russian forces are now closing in on. The Ukrainian defenders are weary and need more weapons, but they will not give up, as our global security editor Rohit Katru reports. It's not just in the streets but from in the woods of Donbass, where the battle is being fought. They're running out of rockets, and the launchers are older than Alexandra or any of his men. These artillery systems have a 16th rocket. Uh, they 1986 years old. And as light fades, the command comes in to fire. These are some of the longest range rockets their army has. Two minutes? Two minutes. The rockets are aimed at the places from where they think Ukrainian towns are being attacked. Then we move before Russia's armed forces have the chance to reply. It's not just people being killed, it's places too. The fight is for cities like Lissy Shanks, which is being erased before the eyes of those who chose to stay. This is the latest destruction, but not the last. Listen here for the sound of the whistle, then the bang. We're leaving, and quickly, that explosion was nearby. The reason there's no commotion is that there's almost no one here. Then, outside our car, another blast. Yeah, it's behind us. Yeah. We spot a plume of smoke rising. It's another residential building which has just been hit a few hundred meters from where we were standing. And this is why what's left of life has moved underground, where it's nighttime all the time, and where everyone has their reason for why they haven't left. For Valentina, it's because she didn't want to be a burden on her young family. I've spent my whole life here. Why should I leave my own home? Grandmothers are praying. We are afraid because we are just human. We get scared. Back beneath the trees, Alexandra's unit are thinking of their families too. The seasons have changed twice since the invasion began. It's now hot. The soldiers are weary and they're missing home. <clears throat> Last year, my son, 20, uh, 21st February, uh, was uh, 
three days before the invasion. Yes, yes. In another field, another rocket launcher is sent in to strike against the Russian units behind attacks like the one we saw with our own eyes. The missiles disappear, then the soldiers too. But nothing is happening rapidly in this war of attrition. Rohit Katru, ITV News, Donbass.